Welcome to the Busy Life Podcast, everybody. My name is Julie, and today I have with me one of my dear, dear friends. Her name is Melanie Wells. I'm going to let her introduce herself to you guys, but there is a reason that I wanted Melanie to come on today. So Melanie and I have been friends for a very long time, and we actually met at the gym, and I'll let her kind of tell her version of the story too, but what I remember the most about Melanie was just how inspiring she was when I first met her. She was always at the gym. She was always working hard. And even, gosh, is it like how many years now? One, two, three, four, four, six years later, we're still friends. She's still working out. And Melanie just, it, she inspires me in so many different ways. She's been through so much and I just, I, I would love for you all to get to hear her story. So I asked her to come on and she's here with us. Hey, Julie, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. So I think we've known each other a little bit longer than six years. Oh, good. But how I met Julie was that when I was at the gym, I used to watch this girl come in by herself, so happy, almost dancing across the room. And I said, I want to work out with that girl. And all of the other girls that I took a class with felt the same way. So they went up and started to talk to you. And I said, wait a minute, I got to get into this too. And then I asked Julie, I said, will you work out with me? And you said, yes. And that was it. So we have been friends and you were also my trainer for quite a long time as well. So I am still working out um, four or five times a week. I still wish that you were my trainer, but um, that's my story for right now. <laughs> I know. So it's it's so crazy. When did I meet you? 2017, 2018? So my husband passed away eight years ago, and I at that time was still horseback riding. That was my main source of exercise. Mm -hmm. And then about... Two years later, we had to put the horse down. So then I said, I needed an outlet. I needed to do some exercise. And my lovely daughter-in-law said, hey, I work out. Why don't you and Evan start working out? Evan's my son. And we just started working out. And so I think, yes, I guess maybe this has been about six years. I thought it was longer than that. I feel like I've known you forever. I know. I feel like I've known you my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you... Melanie has this way about her where she just doesn't take life too seriously. She goes about it. She has fun. I, if I was recording this with a video, you guys would see she has this awesome purple hair. She always has her nails, super fun colors. And I mean, you mentioned it too. And if you want, you can talk a little bit more about that too. But, you know, you've been through some serious heartbreak as well. So Talk to us about what that was like when Ron passed away. So my husband um, had prostate cancer um, about 12 years ago, and he had surgery. Everything was fine for the next seven years. And then it came back, and then we, he was diagnosed with brain cancer, and he lived about five, six months after that. Heartbreak I, isn't even the the word I would describe. Undescribable grief, uh, missing my best friend, having somebody that we could be with. I mean, I could be with all the time. We would do tours with his Porsche on Sundays. We just had a beautiful relationship. And then once he got sick, it just pretty much went very quickly. And I lost him on a Wednesday. And it was just eight years a couple of weeks ago. And just so you know, Julie, tomorrow would have been his birthday. So my child and I are going to celebrate by working out and doing something for, you know, going to the cemetery, maybe having a, a sip of Crown Royal that Ron used to like, and just enjoy our days together. There you go. But you see, first of all, you're right. I... I don't even know what I would do if that happened to Ryan. And that's why I say you are so inspiring because every time you talk about it, it's just like, I can see how strong you are and how much you went through and how it has not stopped you from wanting to be a better person. So 
what do you think is your motivation behind what keeps you going and why is it so important to you that you take care of yourself? Well, so I'll be very honest with you, Julie. And I was the one that told Ron when he was diagnosed, diagnosed rather with brain cancer. Um, I had gone to the hospital. I knew the night before and I went in there and he said, what's wrong with me? And I said, please let me just have the doctor tell you. And he said, no, I want you to tell me. And I told him and he, you know what he said, Julie? He said, oh, thank God. Now I know that there's something wrong. And I said, okay. And then he said to me, I miss you already. Don't be, don't do anything stupid. You have Evan. So Evan honestly keeps me going. Um, as you know, I have a, a rescue dog, Mocha. She keeps me going. And I have a lovely and beautiful daughter-in-law. So it's just, we're three people that are a unit. And I think that's what keeps me going more than anything else, honestly. I mean, I have a great job. I've been working for State Farm for almost 30 years. I have a wonderful boss. And you just got to put one foot in front of the other, Julie, and hope that, you know, you're going to make it through the day. So that's how I look at it. And you do. You do. I mean, Mel when I say that Melanie works out, like, I don't mean like Melanie works out light. <laughs> like, <laughs> Melanie lifts some heavy weight. And Melanie's got biceps. Like, <laughs> you... The funniest thing I remember about working out with you was when you, the first time you talked to me and you said, I want to do what you're doing. And this was when I was like, probably the leanest I've ever been. Like this, one of the strongest points of my life that I've ever been at. And I was like, is, is she serious? Like <laughs> she, she wants to like deadlift all this and squat all this. And I wasn't judging, but I was just like, I don't want to hurt her. Like, I don't want like, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be like, okay, I'm about to do, you know, six reps of a hundred pound deadlift. And I, I didn't want to like break your back. And I didn't want to be the reason that, you know, something happened. And this was the beginning of my personal training phase too. So I was like still new and still scared that like something was going to happen. But fast forward now, I'm like, Melanie, pick up the 50. Melanie, pick up the 35. Come on, it's 75. Not a big deal. <laughs> well, Julie, you also need to tell everybody that I'm I'm 67 years old, so I'm not a spring chicken. So I think you were trying to be very careful that, you know, having fragile bones, you were going to break me. But um, I love working out. I really do. I mean, as you know, everybody goes through phases of that. They love it. They don't want to do it. They do it. But we have a home gym and Evan has put something together where other than a treadmill, you can do everything. And I tell people who always say to me, you know, you look really great, your hair with the purple and the pink. And I said, you know what? You have, it's how you feel. I might have a terrible day, but I look at my head and go, look, there's purple, there's pink in there. You know, look at my nails, they're purple, they're this. You have to make yourself feel good. And this is how I feel good. That's what I do. Exactly. It's the little acts of self-care it's the moments that you use like you said just looking in the mirror and being like my hair is perfect what it's exciting and it takes your mind off of the grief and the, the pain that you've been through in your life and the difficulties that you've had and you know and something else too that Melanie hasn't shared yet though is that her awesome son Evan who was in our wedding has cerebral palsy and he too clearly takes after you because he does not give up. Like he built that home gym and he is also a certified personal trainer. So tell us a little bit about what it was like raising Evan. And we can also talk about how he's a pain in the butt, but how I love it. <laughs> so my son was born at one pound, 12 ounces. So he's 32 years old. So he was a preemie, very, very small. Um, they actually, he was also born on a Wednesday. So Wednesdays are very important days in my life. Certain things have happened. My father died, you know, but good things also. But with Evan, he was born on a Wednesday. And they actually did last rites on him on Friday. And I was uh, completely freaked out. I had no idea. And um, he, he was doing better. I went to church that Sunday. 
and we used to go to church all the time, went to church, was kneeling, and just said to God, if I don't think a negative thought at all, nothing, won't, I just won't let it into my head, please, please, please let this child live. And knock on wood, he did, and he's thriving. He's an amazing person. He has overcome so much more than so many people had. And, uh, you know, somebody said to me, what's the best thing that ever happened to you? Evan. Evan Wells is the best thing that happened to me. So he keeps me going. And that's, that's a very important thing to have a child or to have somebody in your life that makes you feel like that, that makes you stay, you know, here on earth every day. Because there are a lot of people that don't have this, you know? No, I mean, there is so much. So right now, as we're recording this episode, it's May. And May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And I think you just touched on something extremely important that sometimes people feel like they're lonely because they don't have their partner or they don't have their spouse or they don't have a best friend. But they forget that a best friend doesn't have to be somebody you marry and it doesn't have to be, you know, the same friend that you've been friends with since you were three. It can be your kid. And I watched this and now granted, it's a movie. But I watched this movie where it was like a mother daughter movie. And she was talking about just how she is so thankful for her daughter. And listening to you talk about Evan reminds me of that. And something also is that I feel like a lot of people are scared, especially to have kids. I mean, I too like get nervous when everyone's like, oh, are, are you and Ryan going to start trying soon? Are you, are you doing this? Are you doing that? And it's not anybody's business. But something I will say is that's exactly what I want. I want to have my kid or kids one day and I want them to grow up and make me even stronger and look back and be so thankful that they have me and Ryan, just like Evan is so thankful that he has you and how he has Ron. Right. That's exactly right. Um, having a child, I mean, if that's what your path is and Ron and I always wanted to have children. Um, but my sister had problems and I knew I was going to have problems. So, um, Evan is an in vitro baby. So he, um, we got pregnant after the second time. Um, I had delivered him at 24 weeks. And as everybody knows, you're supposed to go to 40 weeks. So it, he's not just, um, I don't know how to say this, Julie. He, he's just more than just having a child full term and everything was fine. It, it wasn't like that for us. It was, it was a lot more uh, than that. And it just makes you stronger. You know, honestly, you, I'm, I don't really know what to say at this point. I mean, it just makes you strong. And then having to deal with Ron and all of that makes you strong too. You know, there's, you don't have anybody else. Yes, I have sisters, you know, my, my parents are gone. Um, but it just makes you stronger. And, and I'm so thankful that I have what I have. And the other thing about Evan also is that he likes to work out a lot. So he gets me motivated because I'll walk in the door. He'll go, okay, mom, change now, you know, or Evan will say, okay, we got to do abs. And the same thing with me, with him. So it's good for both of us. Diana, of course, works out at the gym downstairs <laughs> and sometimes she'll join us, but, um, I, I have a beautiful life, Julie, right now. I mean, even without having the man that I was my soulmate and the man I adored, I still have a very good life. I'm very blessed. You know, a lot of people, you know, say to me, you know, you're doing really great. And I, you know, I can't imagine. No, you can't. You can't imagine. It's hard. There are very, very bad, very, very down days. But, you know, but that's life. Even if you hadn't lost a partner, you still don't have great days all the time. But you just got to keep going, you know? I mean, I, I wouldn't have, I would have missed out on Evan getting married, you know, doing all the things that he's accomplished. So I'm just glad that I'm here. Absolutely. I think the word that you were looking for is miracle. Yeah. That was your miracle baby. And the reason that you are for a loss of words is because there is no words to describe it other than a miracle. And it was meant to happen and he was meant to be your son and he was meant to be here for you. And I know you and I believe in this kind of stuff because 
you know, Melanie and I always talk about like how things mean things, like how Wednesdays mean a lot to her. Repeated numbers mean a lot to me. White butterflies mean a lot. To me. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's that's the bird thing for you? Uh, the cardinal. Cardinal. Well, that's, that's that is a Roman Catholic thing that that's what they say. That okay. cardinals, if you see a cardinal, that it's your loved one. Yeah. So so in my room. I have two things that have sayings about cardinals. So, um, yeah, I truly believe that because I want to believe that, you know, like, uh, and Julie, honestly, when I, when I first lost Ron, when I would, let's say I was driving somewhere and I'd see a cardinal and I'd be like, oh, hey, Ron. And I, oh, I'll oh, her now. but, and I'll, I'll be driving and I'll see a cardinal I'll go, oh, there goes Ron or there goes dad, you know, because that's what you want to believe. You want to believe they're still there. I do. I mean, I really? listen to a lot of, I've listened to a lot of podcast episodes on what's the word for it. It's um, synchronization and synchronicities and how things in your life will line up and that you can manifest the life you want. So long as you're working hard towards it, you're keeping your eye on the prize, you are, you know, committed and you're paying attention to the signs around you. So it kind of reminds me, too, of like even when they say like, oh, you know, a relationship, you kind of know when it's not meant to be because you're not listening to your gut. I think I think that's true in so many different ways, because the the universe has this way, like has this power. And I believe in all that kind of stuff, too. And I don't really know what you would call it, but I believe in it. And I mean, I'm Greek, so my family, you know, believes in God. We go to church every now and then. Um, right now it's Greek Easter, so we're considered the Greece Greeksters because we just come around Easter time. <laughs> but still, you know, I have my angel cards. I wear my cross all the time, and I think having faith in something, no matter what it is, helps you. Like you said, it when you have something you want to believe in, it also makes you want to move forward. Because if you even go back to when Evan was born and a lot of things were unknown you like you leaned on your faith no matter what that is you know and this is not meant to tell anybody that you need to believe this way or you need to be believe that way because that's you know that's nobody else's business you get to do what works best for you but having something to believe in is i think the message that you're sharing and it's like having that something is what keeps you going and that's what keeps you strong Yes, I, absolutely, 100%. And the thing is, is that, you know, I really do believe that, you know, there's reincarnation. I believe that, I just believe a lot is, a lot more is is going to come, you know, whether it's here on earth or in heaven or somewhere else. I just know that this is just my time here. That's all. And I might as well, you know, be a good person and spend time with my family you know, be a good, you know, just, just to, just to be in the moment, I guess is what it is just to be in the moment and just be happy that what I have so many other people don't have, you know, Julie, honestly, um, when I first had Evan and, you know, someone like me gets a little sensitive when people are like, Oh, what's wrong with your son? Oh, your son is this. And, you know, from working with special, special kids, special ed kids, that it is very hard and it's very hard for the children who get bullied and stuff. So it was, you know, it was kind of a tough time, but honestly, Evan is one of the smartest people. And I guess that I look at him and think, Hey, he stutters. He can get over it. He does this. He can get over. Who am I to say, you know, you know, but people used to always say to me, Oh God, I'm pregnant again. And I said, you know what? You don't have any idea what it's like. To be to have a, a child who has special needs, um, and you're just like, oh well, you know, this is my fifth one. That was the worst thing that ever happened to me. But also, Julie, honestly, when I had Evan, I said, oh my God, I have joined motherhood. I have done what millions and billions of women have done is to have a baby because that's really what I want. However, Ron and I, we said if we couldn't have a baby, we would adopt a child. But I found, but we had gone to church and talked to the priest and getting ready to go to Catholic charities and found that I was pregnant a week later. So it kind of like, you know, talk about synchronicity, it all came together. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, 
I mean, my life has is, is been very, um, a lot of ups and downs, but I have very good people in my life, you know, that have kept me going. So, and, and especially you, because you are an inspiration to me. Not oh. the truth. Oh, you're going to make me cry now. <laughs> that's, why, that's why before when you were asked, but like when you were like, oh, I think the word is this. I'm like, yeah, I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> so, oh. I'm gonna, I'm, no, I love you, Julie. You know that you are, you are truly one of the nicest, most beautiful women inside and out I've ever met. Oh. And I love being your friend. I love being your friend. And honestly, I, I think that you the way you describe your life is just, it's so, no, I'm at a loss of words. It's so captivating. Like you can't, you would never know that that was what you went through. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Thank you. And that is insane because in a good way, like it just makes me think. And I feel like there's a reason too that we're talking about this during the month of Mental Health Awareness Week because you and I, I think, connect on a deeper level and therefore we are able to look at the positive things and we can do the fun things and move on in life. And we've both been through our own, you know, grief, loss, frustration, struggle in many different ways. And yet we always find a way to have fun. And no matter what, how busy life gets or how, crazy things are, you know, we could be like, hey, I have this and I, I can't do this or I've got to do this and I can't do that. And it's like those kinds of friendships are the ones that you don't want to lose. And they're the ones that make you extra appreciative because I, speaking of synchronicities, truly believe that everything happens for a reason and everything happens when it's supposed to happen, whether we like it or not. And I think that last part is the most important, whether we like it or not, because, you know, whether it's a big loss, like somebody passing away or not being able to get pregnant or somebody who is, you know, losing a, a boyfriend that they didn't they thought they were going to end up with, like, no matter what it is, even just now, my story, for you guys who don't know, we are house hunting and I really thought we were going to get this one house. And I was convinced that this is the house. This is the house. This is the one I want. And it just didn't work. And it doesn't matter because now we found a new house. <laughs> and the book is in so many ways so much better. So I think when you have that mindset of, you know, life is happening for me, not to me. I'm not being punished. I'm being taught. I think that's the best way to look at things. Yeah, no, I mean, I, uh, what, what you said is exactly right. You know, I mean, you have to make your own happiness too. And even though, you know, people, you know, women like me who have lost their husbands, um, some of them just can't get past it. And it's very hard for me, but I have to get past it because it's been almost eight years. Um, I heard something that I can't remember what her name is, but David Bowie's wife said that when people would say to her about her husband, she would never say my deceased husband or, you know, my, my, um, my dead husband, she would just say my husband. So when people ask me, I have never, uh, unless somebody said to me, is your husband alive or something like that? I never say deceased husband because in my heart, I don't want to cry in my heart. He's there. Yep. So anyway, that, I mean, I really like that, that she said, she never says deceased because that's not how she feels. So, but you know what though, Julie, you, you know, these losses that you have in heartbreaks, they, they make you stronger. And it just means that you're, you know, God put me here to stay here. So I'm still here, sweetie. Still, <laughs> still doing my own thing, you know? Good. You know? And, and that's important too. You know, something else that a lot of people struggle with is, and I know that, you can speak on this a little bit is that they instead of thinking okay i have a, like the positive people in my life i have a lot of people that are here to pick me up i have this i have that they go towards something else and they go towards alcohol they go towards drugs they go towards other things because they get scared and then they become either alcoholics or slightly an alcoholic or a little bit of abusers another way i mean 
Has there been any times in your life where you feel like you start to started to drift towards the opposite way of where you are right now? A billion percent. Yes, absolutely. Yes. There were some very, very dark times after Ron died that I really didn't want to live. I mean, I really didn't. And um, I mean, honestly, I, I wanted to commit suicide. I just, I didn't care. I didn't have Ron here. I wasn't going to live anymore. And um, somehow, some way, I just didn't. I just didn't do it. And you know that I like to drink, so um, I would say I'm slightly alcoholic, but I do know when to not, you know, I do I do know when I need to, to yes, Julie, I do. <laughs> I do. But yeah. I'm as happy as I could be right now, sweetie. You know, this is what my life is. And, you know, I had a great life. But when my husband died, both my sisters, my older sisters said to me, you know, Melanie, I don't know if I would rather have loved somebody like you did and then lost him or if I never had that kind of love. It's like that Shakespeare thing, you know, something about about that. And I said, I wouldn't have missed it for the world because I wouldn't have had Evan. I, my husband was one of these handy men. I mean, he could do anything. So anything in the house, outside the house, he took care of all that. We made an agreement when we first got married. He's like, you take care of the inside. I'll take care of the outside. So it all worked out. You know, and I and I was married almost 30 years. So it wasn't like it was just a very short marriage. So, you know, I've had I've had a great I had a great marriage. So this yeah. is where this is just my life is just like this right now. Who knows what's around the corner? I could I could be moving, I could be doing something else. Who knows? Exactly. But it's that optimism that you have too. And even though you know what? we all fall towards things that are not always perfect and that is okay. Like you said, you know, in the stop and that's what's important. But I only say that because there are people who don't. And when they hear episodes like this, it reminds them that they're not alone. Like you said, a billion percent. Yes. There's absolutely been times where I have used food for comfort and food is not a bad thing. It's not that food shouldn't be used for comfort. I mean, like when you think about Thanksgiving, that's all comfort food. It would be wrong almost if you didn't eat it because then it's like now we're going on a whole other tangent about the food, but it's okay to fall. And it's especially okay if you fall often because like I said, this is Mental Health Awareness Month and something I refuse to do is to stop talking about it. I think that there's so many things that people have gone through in their lives and so many so many stories that are meant to be shared, like yours. And then when people hear them, it reminds them that they're not alone, that they're not the only one who has gone through something like that, whether it's the exact same thing or different and you guys just felt the same pain. So I really commend you for being another point of view, being strong enough to come on here and to be public about everything. Because I literally told Melanie, I said, you have to come on, you you have to. And she was like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, I, I've never done a podcast. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna be nervous. And I said, no, no, you need to be authentic and you need to just tell your story because I promise you, there is going to be at least one person. I guarantee more but at least one person who's going to hear it and be so damn thankful that they heard this episode because they got to hear your story. Oh, thank you, Julie. Well, I love talking to you. You make it feel it's easy and it's comfortable. And it's like you're sitting here in my in my apartment and we're just talking like we always do. Exactly. I told you. My goal for my episodes is always to remind people, first of all, I'm not a licensed pro professional. Like I'm not a licensed therapist. I'm a special ed teacher and a personal trainer, but I'm not a licensed therapist or doctor. However, I do want these episodes to feel like we're just going for a walk in the park or that we're hanging out and that we're just talking and that you can listen to this either in your car or, you know, as you're going on your walk and you're right there with us and we're right here. And as always for everybody listening to like the DMs for the Busy Life podcast on Instagram are always a safe place. You can always say, you know, I relate to this or this hit me in like the feels and we will never judge you. You know, I won't judge you. Melanie won't judge you. The right people in your life will not judge you. 
And if they are, fuck them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's like when my one of my sisters or even my boss, they're always like, you know, I said this before, you know, I'm so proud of you. You know, I, I you're doing great. I don't know that I'm doing so great, but I'm doing what's best for me, you know, and surviving and just um, just doing my job every day, going to work, you know, using my brain, talking to people. That's what keeps me going as well, even though I really would like to just stay home and just hang out. But I'm not that kind of a person. I'm not the kind that's going to sit here and go, oh, my God, my life is horrible. What am I going to do? Because I don't want to be that kind of person, Julie. You know, I mean, I'm an up person. You're a very up person. And it's hard for me to be really sad because that's not that's not my thing. And when I get sad, I'm like, oh, my God, I've got to get out of this. But it's okay to be sad, you know. But as long as you can deal with it, deal with the sadness and know that you never know what's going to happen the next day. So, you know, keep on living. Exactly. Like you said, put one foot in front of the other and try your best to find whatever silver lining there is, even if it's the tiniest thing. I mean, it could literally be that. <laughs> you know what mine was the other day? I had such a bad day that I can laugh at this. I went grocery shopping and I was just not in a good mood. And recently, my grocery store has not been selling the creamer I like. Clearly, <laughs> that, that damn thing is always sold out. Sold out. So I went and I just was like not in a good mood. But the grocery store had my creamer and I was so happy. I was like, finally. <laughs> oh, that's great. So another thing, Julie, is that um, after my after I lost Ron, um, I got some tattoos. So I have four tattoos. So we were talking about, you know, being happy. So one of my tattoos says, do more of what makes you happy. And that's something, and I put it on my arm where I could see it. So every day I can look at it. I also have the heart one that says, be yourself, you know, and the, another one that has, you know, the horseshoe, because I used to horseback ride for many, many years with a paw print and Ron's initials, and then a beautiful flower that says life goes on. That is what makes me happy. Exactly. And I don't care how old you are. You can get a tattoo however old you are and whenever you want. And the next one is going to be four leaf clovers, a bunch of them with a red ribbon, because my sister and I are very good at finding four leaf clovers. So yeah, that means something to me. So that is, that's something I'm looking forward to. See? Can always find a silver lining anywhere. Exactly. Oh my God. I love that though. <laughs> I have a funny story. During exams, um, when I was in college at Salisbury, there was a four leaf clover patch or a clover patch, and I found five in a row. And I was like, this better mean that I'm going to do good because I had five exams. Oh, cool. I know, right? I love those kinds of stories. And honestly, that's what keeps me going. One of the many things that keeps me going too. But if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, I don't have anything, I doubt it. I'm sure you have something that you can find, some small joy that you can either find or create. Melanie and I are big walkers. We love going for walks. We love fresh air. And something you said at the beginning of this is that you have to create your own happiness sometimes. So maybe all it takes is just you coming out of that slump because you are the one pulling yourself out of it yourself. Yep, that's it. Yep, you can only rely on yourself. I mean, it's nice if you have people in your life, but you're the only one that's going to get you out of wherever you are. And however you are, it's, it's okay. Exactly. It's okay. I am so proud of you. I am so proud of you too. And I'm so glad that I got a chance to talk to you. And I was not one bit nervous. It was just like you and I were talking. Oh, always. Well, good. Well, everybody, thank you so much for listening. Melanie, thank you for doing this with me. And I can't wait to talk to you guys next time. Thank you, Julie.